Hi everyone. <sighs> so I've had a lot on my mind um, since the last vlog that I did. Um, I've been doing a lot of thinking probably about for a week and a half on a lot of stuff but tonight it kind of all spiraled down into this what I'm going to talk about tonight. There's going to be more videos on this um, and the stuff that I've gone through and what I've worked through and all that but what I want to talk tonight about is family dynamics and family dynamics are um, how families relate to one another and so after like all my research that I've been doing for the past week and a half I started thinking about my own family tonight and um, the family dynamics in my family and where I stood in the family and what I was in the family. I'm a middle child. My mom and my dad had six children, um, five girls, one boy. I'm number four. <laughs> I was the number four girl and um, I was the baby. For about probably I was five years the baby of the family and then I had my younger sister and then after me or not after me sorry after my sister um, that my youngest sister my brother was born and he's ten years younger than me and um, so I have always been deemed as the peacemaker in my family. I don't know where that came from. Um, I do remember growing up with our family dynamics. Maybe I should call them our family dysfunctional dynamics because we had dysfunction in our family and some of the study in that um, I was doing over the past few days was, um, you know, signs that your family is dysfunctional and I took notes because that's what I like to do and um, some of the uh, reasons you know the characteristics I should say of um, dysfunction in a family there were eight of them that I found online but um, the number one that stood out to me was abuse and uh, there was abuse in my family there was um, I would say there was physical abuse like not where I was beaten black and blue but I do remember yeah I was physically abused by my mother never by my father um, emotional abuse that came from my father and my mother um, I always felt like I had to beg for love I was always such a loving child I always wanted um, like affection and every night before I'd go to bed I would go to my mom my dad was usually always gone because he was an evangelist and he was on the road a lot but I remember many a night like before I went to bed I had to go in and I had to get a kiss from my mom and she always teased me about it but she always kissed me she did but I wanted her to know that I loved her and sorry that I wanted to connect with her and I always looked at my mom because I loved her very dearly. I understood the abuse that she went through with in her family when she was growing up. But so I think maybe I kind of like um, forgave her, you know, for when she lashed out to me because I know what she came from. But yeah, so, um, I don't want to be a crybaby. But anyways, so, yeah, I had abuse. Emotional, verbal, 
verbal abuse from my mom. But she would, I remember, um, I was nosy. I was reading my mom's, she had writings. It really wasn't a diary, but it was just like in a little notebook, just like this. And she was writing her prayers down to God. And she was like, I'm sorry, Lord. I blew up again. I did it again. So I know that she didn't want to do the things that she did and how she acted and and she was aware and she would come back and say sorry she would after she would do those things and I always forgave her because I, I loved her and I understood what she had gone through but anyways Stop weeping. Anyways, so yes, I had physical, emotional abuse. We we're talking about the characteristics of a dysfunctional family. And another one of them was unpredictability and fear. And my mother was always, always <laughs> leaving my dad. <laughs> always. And they'd get in a fight and... I don't even remember what the fights were about, but I remember that they would fight, and she would always call me. I don't know why she called me. Probably because I was the only one that would ever listen to her, you know, when she would call. She'd call my other sisters, and they'd ignore her, so she'd always say, Vonda, get up here and pack my suitcase, and so she'd make me pack her suitcase, and I remember being in the back of the closet and like crying and I didn't know this was going to be so hard but uh, but I'd be back there packing her suitcase and because she was leaving again for the too many times to count and I'd be crying because I didn't want her to go and I remember my sister Charmin she always come in there and say, Bonda, you know, she always comes back. But in my little girl heart, I didn't know that she would come back. I always thought that it was the last time she was going to leave me forever. And so, unpredictability and fear, yeah. I was always afraid of that my whole family unit was going to be gone, you know, the only family that I knew, regardless of the dynamics of it. And another one of <laughs> characteristics of a dysfunctional family is the lack of intimacy. Gosh, I remember when I was a little girl that my dad was always so like close to me and he was always hugging me and kissing me and I we fought to sit by him in church you know because he was affectionate and he was warm and he was loving and that stopped when we got to be when we were growing into young women you know when we started reaching puberty um, because of the things that my mom went through in her childhood and the sexual abuse that happened in her family, it made her paranoid and suspicious and accusatory towards my father, which he never, ever, ever, ever did. But that caused him to retract and to take that affection and that love that he had for us, away from us. And so, I had a lack of intimacy with a man, you know? I remember him when I was a young girl, when I was a little girl, but then it was like stolen from me and it was taken away and yeah. So, I have that characteristic also. And the last one that I have here is poor communication. 
which we didn't have. Because <laughs> in my family, you couldn't speak your mind. Because <laughs> if you did, you got shut down. Um, nobody cared about your tears. Well, um, I didn't feel comfortable um, expressing my feelings to my dad about anything because after I got older and there wasn't that connection, you know, with him anymore that was cut off because of fear of something that was unreal. And then my mother, I think that her, she had a hard time just loving and trusting from what she went through. And so here I am today and I never wanted to put any of this on my children. I wanted a family with my kids with um, love and support and sometimes history repeats itself and you get into relationships with people and I felt that way with my children's father when I married him it was kind of like the same what I felt with my father that he would never let me get emotionally close to him you know he said that he loved me with words but the intimacy no I've never had that I've never had that intimacy with a man ever and I'm looking for that that's what I want I'm ready for that this is not even the direction that I thought this video was gonna go tonight but this is my heart and family dynamics how we interact with one another and all of that with my parents and how they were it caused not closeness with my siblings at all like we fought a lot you know when we were kids like we weren't nice to each other we called each other names we used to hit each other all the time that's one thing that I never wanted my kids to do was like beat on each other I wanted them to love one another and um, I just remember always being the peacemaker in my family or trying to be the peacemaker the one that tried to keep everybody like in peace so there would be harmony in the family and that nobody would be fighting and that everybody loved and I think that caused me as a young girl to always pretend like I pretended like everything was perfect at home when I'd go to school I was a funny girl I was the one you know like nothing could hurt me I had this tough exterior like it was so tough but I had to have that tough exterior and that family you know to like try to survive there and try to keep peace and try to be myself and be unique and like to stand out but I didn't stand out I got picked on I got um, I was a doormat a lot to my sisters they they took advantage of me a lot. I remember when my mom would send us to the store all the time and um, we'd always agree, me and my sister Kitty and my sister Carla would all agree that we we're going to carry equal bags home, right? And we'd be walking home and it'd be cold and there'd be snow and um, they'd get tired of carrying their bags. And, um, I remember they'd be like, oh, okay, we're just going to put these down right here. And so they would put their grocery bags down because we, we each had like, you know, one bag in each hand and they would put their bags down, Carla and Kitty would. And so I would also, 
and they'd start walking towards home. This would be at the where the old library was. And I was like going to stick right in there with them and I was going to walk with them and I was not going to let them bully me this time because they bullied me all the time. And I was like, and they would say the whole time, oh, mom's going to be so mad at you. She's going to yell at you. You're going to be in so much trouble, Vonda. Ooh, you know, and they would get to me and I oh, never wanted to make my, my mom mad. I never wanted to make her mad. That was like one of the things I always tried to do my whole life was like, keep her happy, which was impossible. <laughs> ah, seriously. <laughs> I, I always think of that line from Prince as like, maybe I'm just like my mother. She's never satisfied. Anyway, <laughs> so I would like walk up a couple blocks with them too and they'd be taunting me the whole time. You better go back and get those. And of course, I didn't want to come home like and my mom say where are the groceries and so I'd walk back there crying the whole way and I would carry all of those groceries home by myself I'd have three bags in each hand and I'd carry them home they did that to me too many times to count and so through the years I've had to learn to be tough but it, it, I didn't get tough till just recently. I went through a lot. Like I said, this isn't gonna be my only video on this because I have so much to talk about with my sisters. My sisters, yeah. I'm not close with any of my sisters. Not a one of them. And I don't like that. I don't even want to say it's not even by my choice. No, it is by my choice. Now it's by my choice. I used to like want so badly to make everything right. Like to, to make wrongs right. I've said sorry so many times when I have nothing to be sorry about. So this is going to be tough. And I promise I'm going to try to contain contain my composure and not cry. This, But this is difficult. This stuff is hard for me to discuss. I started writing um, probably about seven years ago. I started taking writing courses when I was over in Portland. and Because um, I was writing my memoir. My memoir is my memoirs. My memories. <laughs> things that happened to me. And I remember my sisters finding out about that I was writing about my memories. And one of my siblings had said to me that she would um, sue me for slander if I said anything about her in any of my writings. And you know what? I won't use any names. But I'm going to talk about my truth. I'm going to talk about what happened to me. This is my life. This is what happened to me. And I'm going to speak it. I'm not going to keep quiet. It's going to be a lot. Because I have a lot. It's happened to me. A lot of crap. But it's my truth. And I'm going to speak it. <laughs> and nobody can sue me for slander if I don't use any names. So... People who know me will probably know who I'm talking about. And there's probably going to be a lot of backlash from that also. People not liking me for me telling the truth about perhaps somebody that they care about. But it's my truth. It's my story. And I'm going to tell it. I'll talk to you guys soon. Um, I'll go through a lot more stuff. I'll try not to be so weepy, but um, leave your comments below. If anything that I said to you resonates, you know, in your spirit, um, we can heal and we can grow and we can get better and be happy and love our lives. And yeah, I'll see you soon.